Good morning everybody and welcome to the final part of our Lionel Johnson series. In today's video we're going to be tackling things such as the face, the shield and the sword. So next up we're going to start working on the lion's face. So our first paint is going to be Bugman's Glow. This is going to be an all over coat over all of the skin. So with our Bugman's Glow, we're just simply going to paint two thin coats over all of the skin. With the Bugman's Glow all base coated in, we're now going to base coat in the hair. And for that, we're going to use Zandri Dust. When doing your hair, so for the main part here, I'm using a size one brush. However, when I get closer to here, I'll be going down to a size zero or even a double zero just to make sure I've got enough control when I get to that skin. Okay. After the blonde hair is all base coated in, we're going to give the entire face and the hair a all over wash with Reikland Flesh Shade. When applying your wash, you want to be fairly liberal with it, but just if you get any heavy, heavy pooling, just wick off your brush and just move it around and ensure it's not pooling too heavily in one area. So on this cheek here, for instance, that's a bit too much paint. So I'm going to wick off my brush and I can simply just pull some of that up and just move it around. So with the Reikland Flesh Shade all dry, you can see it adds a lot of depth to the face. However, it does tint it into a more reddish kind of tone. So to start layering up the face and bringing back all the highlights, we're going to use some Cadian Flesh Tone. And we're going to thin this down to a little bit thinner than your standard layer and these are going to be focused on most of the prominent highlights such as the eyebrows, the nose, the cheekbones etc etc. So onto the face itself as I mentioned we're looking for the main highlight points such as the eyebrows here, the ridge of the nose and the cheekbones. Now, when it comes to the actual flat of the head, we're going to take that same cane flesh tone, we're going to thin it down a little bit more to more towards of a glaze consistency. And we are going to apply nice thin coats gradually over the forehead. And here we go. So here is the face after those Cadian flesh tone highlights. So you can see now we get some really, really nice skin tone variety with the nice warm shadows and the bright skin tone. However, our next highlight is going to be Wildling Flesh. This is from the Iron Painter. And this is going to be a much more focused highlight now, specifically for areas such as the nose and the eyebrows. So it's just a simple matter of really taking your time with this wildling flesh. You know, we don't want to overdo it. I'm just going to pick out the most prominent raised areas. After the wildling flesh, you can see we have this really, really nice warm skin tone with bright highlights. So the skin is now complete, so we'll move on to highlight the hair. So the first highlight for the hair is going to be Ushabti Bone. And when doing the hair, we're going to be following the actual strands of hair. So we're going to be painting straight lines in this sort of motion. This is again just another matter of take your time with it and just follow these hair strands.
with those highlights of Ushabti bone all dry. You can see our hair just has this really nice bright blonde section in it now, whilst maintaining the Zandri dust in the shadows. So our next step, just to really reinforce it, is to take some pallid witch flesh. This is going to be just on some select strands of hair. Okay, and here we go. So this is the lion's face all finished. Now, when it comes to the eyes, so with eyes, trying to actually paint in a pupil, you know, the black and the white, it is straight simply very, very difficult. Especially even on a model like this, the pupils are so small that you can essentially barely even see them. So the main way to do eyes is to take some of that Reichland flesh shade that we did earlier and just run in just a very small dot of it into the eyes to make them look as if they are in shadow. So this is the lion's face fully complete. So I did lose a little bit of footage here, but just to quickly show you, so we've done the lion's face and then for the other head options, the two hooded ones are very, very simple. They are Caliban green with some black wash and then some further highlights with Caliban green. And then the helmet option is the helmet is the Abaddon black with those Caliban green glazes. And then these wings so far are just a Mephiston red base coat with a black wash over them. So focusing on the winged helmet. So the first highlights are going to be with Evil Sun Scarlet. And then we're going to do some finer highlights with some Troll Slayer Orange. So with this Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to be doing a edge highlight. And then on the actual wings themselves, we're going to be painting the upper three quarters, leaving the darker red and the black wash in the recesses. With the orange painted onto the wings, the actual wings of the helmet are complete. So now we just need to do the eyes. With the Mephiston red loaded up, it's just a matter of being as careful as possible and just base coating in the eye. So next up with the Evil Sun Scarlet, we're looking to apply this just in the bottom half of the eye going this way. And then finally with Troll Slayer Orange, we're just going to do a very small highlight just in the bottom of the eye. With the Troll Slayer Orange highlight finished, our eyes are done. The final step on this head is just to paint this little detail at the top with some cold gold. With the cold gold applied, the winged helmet is complete. So moving on to the next part of the lion, and we're going to do the pelt on the back. So this is going to be base coated in Rhinox Hide, and then we're going to do progressive amounts of dry brushing with brighter and brighter browns. So just take your time with this, just base coat it in, being as careful as possible with all of the red cape. With the Rhinox Hide all dry, we're going to start our dry brushing and we're going to use some Doom Ball Brown. Typically with dry brushing, I would use a brush like this. This is from the Iron Painter. However, in this case, the round bristles are not ideal. So in what I'm going to use instead 
is an old set of normal brushes. So you see these are these are really old, they're quite battered. But because of the actual tip of it, this is going to be a lot more ideal for what I need. I would not recommend using your standard brushes for this because it is quite an abrasive and destructive kind of method. So just use some old knackered brushes. The process is much the same. We've loaded up our brush and we're going to you know, work it into the bristles, wipe off a good chunk of it. And then when it comes to being on the actual model, we are simply going to follow the detail and very lightly just dry brush and catch those raised fur textures. With the Doomball Brown dry brush all complete, you can see it catches all of those raised areas, leaving the Rhinox hide in the recesses. So for our next dry brush, we're going to take some Gawthor Brown. This is just a lighter brown. We're going to repeat the process but be a bit more focused and a bit lighter this time so that we will also maintain some of the Doomball Brown as well. With the Gawthor Brown all done, you can see we have maintained the Doomball Brown and the Rhinox Hide and we've got this really nice bright fur detail as well on all of the upper raised areas. The final step for the fur is to take some Agrax Earthshade and this is going to be a very selective wash and it's going to be a recessed shade into all of these sort of areas down here and down here. And there we go. So with the Agrax all dry, our dark brown fur is complete. The only thing left is the claws here. We're just going to paint those with some Mechanica Standard Grey and then give them a quick edge highlight with some Eschen Grey. With those claws complete, our pelt is finished. With the pelt now done, I have been able to actually stick on the backpack. So the backpack, as you can see, it's fairly simple. It's just these parts of bronze. This is the same as the armor. And then this is cold gold. So the next thing we need to focus on is the Emperor's shield. So the background is going to be a nice dark red. The filigree bit here is going to be cold gold. And then the actual outer part of the shield and the griffin are going to be more of a warm gold so that we have a bit of contrast compared to all of the cold gold that is actually on the model. So for the red of the shield, I don't want it to be the same red as the cape because it will just be too much of the same colour. I want it to be a darker red. So we're going to use Encarmine Red from the Iron Painter. This is like a dark crimson. So this is just going to be an all over coat on the background of the shield. But if we do get any of it onto the griffin or the snake, it's not any big of a deal because we're just going to base coat that with our gold anyway. With the red all applied, our next step is to take a black wash and we're just going to cover over the entire area. When applying your black wash, just make sure that you don't get any heavy, heavy pooling anywhere. And if you do, just wick off your brush and you can just move that black wash around. With the black wash dry, I want this bottom half of the shield here to be darker than this upper half. So I'm going to apply a second coat of black wash only in this bottom half. So after that second coat of black wash in the bottom quarter, you can see we get this transition now from the brighter red here into a dark red down here. So our next step is going to be to block in all of the gold details on the shield. So that's going to be the eagle, the outside border, and then this fabric looking border just here. 
So for the warm gold details, we are simply using just a base coat of Retributor armor. With the gold details all base coated in, we need to base coat in the snake. So this snake is going to be Caliban green, and it goes from here and also around here on the back as well. So with everything base coated in, we need to give it a wash. So the warm gold is going to be washed in Agrax Earthshade and the cold gold Lariat just here is going to be washed in the black wash that we used earlier. With the shade all dry, we now need to start highlighting. So for the gold here, we're going to come in with a bright silver. For the cold gold, same as over here, we're going to use some pure grey knight steel. And for the green, we're going to use some warpstone glow. So we're only going to want a little bit of this silver, and we're going to look for the sharpest points, such as up here. Uh, the beak. And these points here. For the green, I have turned the warpstone glow into more of a glaze, and we're just going to be building this up slowly in some of the highlight areas. With those highlights in place, there's only a few things left to do on the shield, and that is to finish off the eagle's eye just here and these two gemstones. For the eagle's eye, it has been base coated in that warpstone glow from earlier, and now this is just some moot green, and we're going to look for a dot highlight. Once that highlight is complete, we're going to take a small dot of flash gitch yellow and we're just going to dot the eye. So here we are with that eye all painted in. You can see it's a nice bright green. And then I also have painted in the eye on the snake and its tongue as well. For the gemstones, one of them is going to be red and one of them is going to be blue and the base coats for them are going to be a Cantor blue base coat and a Mephiston red base coat. Okay, so when it comes to gemstones, we need to choose a central point of light. So in our case, I'm going to be choosing this top corner up here, so then we need to paint a white dot up there in the case of blue and build our highlights directly opposite it. So our first color we're just going to be doing this bottom half down here and then for the final highlight we're just going to do a smaller area again. And then we simply put in the white highlight on the other side. With those gems finished, our Emperor's Shield is complete.
Okay, moving on, we're going to do all of the purity seals around the model. So the parchment is going to be base coated in Xandri dust, and the wax is going to be base coated with Mephiston red. Once the purity seals are base coated in, and don't forget the bits on the base as well, we're going to wash the parchment with Agrax Earthshade and the wax with some Druki Violet. So when those washes are dry, we need to highlight them. So for the parchment, we're going to use Ushabti Bone. And then for the wax, we're going to just simply return to our Mephiston Red and we're going to catch it just on the raised areas of the wax. With the highlights done, we now just need to do the black writing. So we'll just simply thin down some Abaddon Black into a fairly thin layer consistency. We're going to use a small brush and just basically do zigzag lines with our brush. So you don't want a lot of paint on your actual brush. So we're going to load up, wick off any of the excess. And then it's just a simple matter of coming in and just drawing little lines and dots. With the writing all done, our purity seals are finished. After those purity seals are finished, I did quickly go around and just finish off some of the watches. So things like the green shaft here and the sword. And now the lion is also stuck to the actual base. And we've added just a couple of grass tufts and put some mud on them as well. So the final thing to do on the lion is his sword. Now the client wants this to be a green lightning sword. So these two nodes here, they're going to be glowing and we're going to be painting some actual forks of lightning on the sword. And then we're going to use some paper clips and some staples to make actual forks of lightning coming from the sword down to the base. To make your lightning, we're going to need obviously a paper clip and we're just going to pull this out. And then we're going to need some old like rusty uh, clippers because we're obviously going to have to clip the actual metal and then to make the actual forks in the lightning just get yourself a pair of pliers and we, we can just grab certain ends and just twist them around make them into all sorts of different shapes until you're happy with it and then just clip it off and we use super glue to stick it onto the sword and onto the base so this is how it's looking with the two paper clips on. So the paper clips are going to obviously be the main arc of lightning. And then we're going to take the staples, which are smaller and thinner, do the exact same process, but we're going to stick these from the actual lightning just down to the base. So it's like an extra arc coming off the lightning. With the staples applied as well, our lightning effect is ready. So we're just going to let the super glue fully dry and where we've got the super glue lodges on the actual base, that doesn't matter because where these connection points are going to be, we're going to be uh, painting them to be a bright glowing green. So you won't see any of this super glue, especially once it's dry anyway. And then the actual sword itself, the sword was only primed at this current moment. So we're going to paintbrush prime the lightning. And when it comes to painting the actual sword, any of the parts here where the super glue is dried into a white, you can see that there, that will be completely covered over by our base coat. So with the primer all dry, our first step is going to be some Caliban green and we're just going to cover the entire sword and all of the lightning with it. I will be doing it with an airbrush just for speed. One tip for airbrushing, if you don't want to get any of your overspray anywhere else, I simply just use a piece of card I can just put this behind the sword, spray that bit, you know, spray the lightning, and I won't be getting this anywhere else. And then equally down the bottom as well, I can just put this under the sword and just spray without any overspray. spray. 
With the Caloran Green all dry, we're going to start actually tracing in the lightning now. So these two bits here are where the lightning is going to emanate from. So these are going to be our brightest points on the sword. So we're going to paint on our lightning actual forks coming from this point. So we're just using some warpstone glow here. And it's been thinned down to a bit thinner than a typical edge highlight. Once you've got your lightning all traced in, we're now going to take some white. I'm going to be personally using a white ink and we're going to just go over some of our lightning just for some brighter points. And then we'll later put a, another paint over that white and it will be really enhanced. So once that white ink is dry, you can see we've just enhanced a lot of that lightning and I've also painted it over the actual power nodes as well. So our next step is to take some shamrock green. This is a very, very nice bright speed paint. We're going to thin this down just a little bit. We're going to paint it over all of this. So that white will enhance the shamrock green and because it's thin, it'll also give us a subtle glow around the actual lightning as well. And here we go. So with that shamrock green all dry, you can see we get this really nice, vibrant green lightning. We get that subtle green glow as well on the actual blade. And then those two power nodes are really bright as well. So I'm gonna repeat the same process on the actual lightning, doing some highlights with warpstone glow, then coming in with white, and then coming in with the shamrock green. With the green lightning all finished, here is our completed Lionel Johnson.